Hello viewers, Super GT here on Gran Turismo Sport. This is round number seven of the Manufacturer's Series. So we come here to the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. I've chosen this and chosen it way back when. And we're going to try to have a really good race here. In fact, this is going to be one of the better races I think I've ever been involved in. I'm going to show you my qualifying. Qualifying is important, of course. Especially in this race because the, the grid, or sort of the people in the race, uh, were very good. So, you know, any sort of advantage you can get is going to matter. So what I'm going to do here, at the end of lap two, I'm going to dive into the bit lane to get some new tyres. So I'm not going to set a time until my final time around the circuit. So you can see here, this is the end of my third lap. So no actual time has been set yet because I've just been going into the pits or be doing out laps. So, here we go then. I've only got one opportunity to set a lap. But the reason I went into the pits is to get fresh tyres and uh, don't refuel the car. So I've got less um, fuel in the tank, which gives me a lighter car. So I've kind of got the optimum machine beneath me to go and attack a lap of the Nürburgring. We've got some traffic just ahead of us. Hopefully he won't come into our path uh, later on in the lap. But well, we shall see about that. So through turn four, out of the arena section, running a little bit wide, a bit wider than you'd like, but you can kind of do that and it, you can get away with that. Into turn five, just looking for the, the end of that cutoff on the right hand side for the uh, mini GP circuit. And then winding through turn number six. Now the group four cars are really easy on the throttle. So zero traction control here. And you can get on the power like really early in these cars. The cars don't really react too much. Well, I mean, some of them do, but this um, this uh, Nissan GTR is actually really composed, and I think a really well balanced car for this circuit. So we've actually set a purple sector there, which isn't just a personal best, but it is an actual best in the race, or sorry, in the qualifying session. So as it stands here, we are on four pole position, but we still have a third of a lap to go into turn ten and then into 11, so needing a good exit here onto the back straight. Let's look at the next split, three tenths up on pole position, coming up into the chicane. We've got some traffic slowing down. That's not going to slow us down though, going past that German. Looking for our braking zone just before the 100 board. There it is on the brakes. The German ahead in the Mercedes in a fairly difficult spot. They get oversteer on the exit of the chicane into the final corner just blocking our sort of line into the final turn gonna have to go for a cutback move I think we lost maybe a tenth or two is it going to be enough to get pole position this time around we cross the line now and it is pole position by just under a tenth of a second so perhaps that advantage from the newer tyres and the depleted fuel might have got me pole position there either way a really good lap pleased to have got pole position 1400 points on offer for a victory in this race. Smoke weed every day. I can't believe they actually changed the intro music for the Manufacturer series, but quite an interesting thing they've uh, they've adapted it to there. So here we go then on the grid. FYH Super GT pole position. Don't get too many of those. Uh, so don't get used to it, but there we go, that's second, and that is about all you need to see for this moment. Off the line we go, um, so just so you know, the guy in second, he is driving the Mitsubishi Evo, and you see the field there streaming into the first corner uh, at sunset here at Nürburgring, so visibility might be a bit difficult at times. As we go into the first corner, I went defensive, I think I've perhaps made that error before where, you know, I don't defend and I get sort of dive bombed where people just take the invitation because you're taking the normal racing line. So I kind of learned that lesson, just defend the position, just block the inside line, even if it slows you down. I think that's my problem sometimes. I like to just absolutely take the optimum line all the time as much as I can, uh, but people just take the invitation to go up the inside. So you can see there, I think briefly the German behind did get overtaken in the first corner, but then he managed to get it back. That Lancer, uh, we can talk about the differences now, I suppose, between the two cars. So that, the Lancer that he's driving, extremely good on handling, really, really good around the fast sweeping corners, has a lot of downforce, perhaps not quite on the McGann sort of level, and I'm surprised that we're not seeing the McGann's 
uh, towards the sharp end. But uh, yeah, the last two is really, really good on the corners. And the Nissan is also good, not as good, not too bad though. But I will have the uh, straight line speed advantage. The thing he needs to do really is, well, because he's slow on the straights, he can kind of just tuck into my slipstream on most of the straights, as long as he stays within a couple of tenths of me, and he can kind of get pulled along, if you like, or pulled off, if that doesn't sound too wrong, and he will be able to keep up with me on, on the straights as well. So that's a big advantage for being behind sometimes, that he can sort of uh, accelerate a bit faster than he normally would have done if he wasn't behind me, and perhaps save fuel as well, because of course, fuel saving can come into fruition in the pit stops, it can make the difference if you're going to be going into the pit lane nose to tail on each other. Um, a couple of percent can make all the difference to get ahead of someone in the pit stop phase. So a close uh, finish to lap number one. He's still right on my tail. It's going to be one of those races where we're going to be very evenly matched and you can feel the differences between the cars as we uh, as we come out of turn number 11 to the back straight. I can kind of just pull away slightly as I feel I have the straight line speed. But then it's these sections here, the first sector and the second sector, where that Mitsubishi Evo really comes into its own. So let's see how we do lap number two. I'm going to try and control the race from the front. Uh, I think the key here really just not to panic. Uh, just perform the best you can. I think something I've noticed, as long as you do about 15 minutes at least worth of practice, then you're, you're going to panic less when it all goes wrong. So it's very easy if you only do like a couple of laps of practice, like two laps. Once it starts going wrong, then you don't really know how to correct it. So I, I do value the practice quite a lot, and it just gives you that extra consistency in the race uh, to hit your marks, hit your braking, uh, braking markers, which I think is one of the most important things in racing. So you can see just how close he is. I'm not going to panic yet. I know I've got the straight line speed advantage, and I will just block him or defend legally, should I say, or should I have to. I don't think he's going to go for a move from there. The, the Evo is, I think, slightly better on the brakes, so he could go for a brave pass into that corner. But I think just constantly monitoring that gap on the top left of the screen, just under the position, the gap between myself and him, uh, just to make sure that he's within uh, a sort of healthy range for me. This is the end of lap number five. Lap three and four kind of went through with not much drama, but he was still harassing me very close. You can see the third place has dropped off now. Was he going to go to the pit lane? I was hoping he would to split the strategy between us, but he didn't. So that is a rounding out of lap number five. So he's going to follow me for another lap around the circuit. So opting there to go for the same strategy as me, presumably, because uh, of course with 11 laps you can't you can't pit halfway into the race exactly. He, he does get very close on the brakes into turn one, a little bit deep, and uh, we could perhaps uh, pull away through this section, just off the throttle slightly on the entry into turn two. You can just see how close he is. He dropped off through turn one, but then he's back immediately through turn two. That Lancer really giving him the grip to uh, get onto terms with me once again. Still keeping my call cool, though. He hasn't really had a good opportunity. He's actually got a penalty now. We don't know how big that is or whether he'll be able to serve it between here and the end of the race. But that could be pivotal. So I'm going to have to take note of that. So if he does get ahead, then ideally I just need to be very close. He's got a much better exit than me. Out of turn six, down towards the head. I'm going to move slightly narrow in the centre of the circuit. He thinks twice about going down the inside on a very narrow line, which I think was the sensible decision and he backs right out of it. So we've just about kept the position. That is a warning shot though. Uh, out of turn six, a poor, uh, poor exit, as I just really wasn't on the throttle quite as early as I should have been. And he almost took advantage of that, that uh, speed difference though, between the Nissan here and the, the Evo. I think that just about saved me, as he couldn't quite capitalize. He didn't quite have enough uh, top end on his car. So this is it, the pit stop phase is coming right up. As a result of being in front, I could fuel save a little bit. I suppose he could fuel save as well because he's constantly in my slipstream. So we're going to see how it goes up into the chicane. Break just before the 100 board. Throw it in. You really do have to be aggressive with the curves through the chicane. So we've got two wheels on the red and white stuff. Then you're good. Swifting. Uh, swifting? 
going swiftly over to the right hand side, I've invented a new word, uh, into the pit lane, a small tap on the wall, is that going to cost us, I'm, hope, I'm hoping I don't get penalty, got 23% of fuel left, he had 26, so he did save a little bit more than I did, on the exit of the pit lane, he has got ahead, he's jumped ahead of me, he's gained maybe half a second, but that's all it took, to go from second into what would be first, we've got someone ahead, who hasn't elected to take their pit stop yet, but presumably they will do at some point. I don't think you can do an entire race on one tank of fuel. Well, you probably could if you if you put it all the way down to lean setting and just fuel save like hell, but then you're not going to really succeed in that at all. So this is effectively the race for the lead. Now, I've got to kind of keep my call here because the pace was very even between the two of us in the first half of that race, of this race. So, just got to make sure I hit my mark still, don't really panic, we still have four and a half laps left to go, and the pressure will start going over to him once we get towards the end of the race and he knows that I'm right there, especially when I've got that straight line speed advantage. As, as small as that advantage is, it is still an advantage. He goes slightly deep into the hairpin, cuts back for that straighter, more direct line on the way out, and it's an aborted exit because you're accelerating all the way up the hill here the Schumacher RS and then up towards turn 10 and 11 so it's quite a long acceleration zone Schumacher RS is absolutely flat out in these cars it takes a lot of entry tarmac and AstroTurf into the uh, tenth turn which uh, sort of opens up the corner so you can carry more speed through you see just how quick that Lancer is through the corners this is where my car is going to excel now though on the back straight in the slipstream is he going to go defensive I think he may well do he's going to stick to the left hand side I'm going to have to go over to the right hand side, he's defended his position very well, still giving me a car length on the outside, just being really careful there to not go into the back of him, I think I've learned another lesson, another crucial lesson in the Gran Turismo Sport world, don't go into the back of your opponent because you're going to get slapped with a massive ridiculous penalty and he's got the penalty here, I think even though I'm in second or even though I'm behind, well I am second now, I think once we go past the pit lane. He's just going to go defensive into the first corner. I thought about going down the inside. He just saw it coming and he just swiveled uh, slightly down the straight to keep the position. Got the cutback on him into turn two. Going to go just for that cutback. Backing off slightly to get the undercut. Now into turn three. The Evo sweeping around the outside. He's got so much grip and confidence on the brakes just to keep his position and make it stick. That is a really good race there a really good uh, defence from him he saw that I was going to sort of dummy him to the right hand side into turn one he didn't really buy it and he just kept his uh, foot in on the right hand side and kept the position just about he went very deep though and I think that's what you're doing again just trying to really back off make sure I don't go into the back of him through turn six I'm trying to get as close as possible when the margins are this close when it's this close you really do have to push your opponent to the limit obviously don't push them but really you do have to get as close as you really can because it can make all the difference. I think it's one of those races where we are basically 50-50, you know, we are balanced completely. It's just the difference in the cars which is making all the difference. He's got the grip, I've got the power and you can just really tell through the corners that he can just slightly pull away. There's not much I can do about it. But then on the straights I can just reel him back in uh, ever so slightly. Rounding out uh, turn 11 then on lap number 8 3 more to go after this can we get close enough I think the important thing to do here is perhaps not to go for a move into the chicane unless it really can stick he's gone very defensive I'm going to stick up the inside make him think twice just trying to get him out of position so I can get close through the final turn and then into turn 1 again I think turn 1 is the best place to go for a move around this track so really just trying to get him out of position to go for a lunge into that first corner you can see though uh, the, if you don't have acceleration in a way having so much grip can help you because you've got so much speed and confidence to go onto the straight and he just has so much of a margin before my power can sort of overcome him and I was gaining on him at the end of the straight he's gone very deep though into the first corner he's just about going to keep the position but I'm now going to be right on his tail once again go deep into turn 2 look for that later apex and possibly a move into turn 3 not quite going to happen there though I think Looking at this now, my best opportunity is to stick very close 
throughout the second and third sector and go for a move perhaps into the final chicane or into turn one. Through these corners here, it's, it's really hard, it's really difficult to overcome the handling ability of that Mitsubishi Evo. There's not much I can do about it, it just handles so well. And I think my best shot will be into uh, one of the uh, big braking zones at the end of the two longer straights on the circuit. So just trying to shimmy him into a mistake, trying to make him shimmy across into a position he doesn't want to be in by sort of putting my car semi into an attacking position. He doesn't quite buy it though, he does go a little bit deep. Well, we saw it in a previous lap, he can kind of cut back and take sort of straighter exit. So again, just maximizing that slipstream. Slipstream does work very well on this game, just following absolutely all the way, trying to get every pixel of my car behind every pixel of his car to really get that virtual downforce, or virtual, not downforce, opposite of that, virtual slipstream is the right word. So just grazing two wheels off the grass, and that's put me out of position in the crucial part of the circuit. This is where I really want to go for that move. And coming up into the chicane, it's not going to be anywhere near close enough. I'm going to try and have a good chicane here to try to really get close to him. I have a bit of a moment through the apex of the first part of the chicane. He's going to drop me back. You see the gap opening up now. With only two laps left to go, will I be able to overhaul him? Or will I have to just try and keep close to him and get uh, within a second, ideally, and uh, minimise uh, his chances of winning? Because he still has a penalty. Two laps left to go. Can I overhaul him? It's been an absolute titanic battle so far. Nose to tail, pretty much the entire race between the two of us. First half, he's been behind second half he's been ahead he has to deal with the pressure now as we as we come into the the twilight uh, stages of the race as the day comes into the twilight stages as well the sun shining down upon us here at the Nürburgring taking plenty of uh, astroturf on the apex of turn four just about clean though keeping two wheels or two pixels probably on the circuit For second of purple sector he does have the fastest lap of the race at this current stage uh, when I set the uh, uh, my second lap, you see there on the right hand side, my second lap was the purple. So I was at the time the fastest lap, but his fastest lap is just a tiny bit faster. So then into turn number seven, deep on the brakes, just trying to scare him into something. He's keeping his cool though, and there's something he's done very well so far. He hasn't really made any mistakes. I think I made that slight mistake on the previous lap just uh, running two wheels wide on turn 11. Very, very close now though. He's gonna go defensive, he knows I'm there. He definitely senses my presence. Going through turn 10, into turn 11, got the momentum, I'm gonna look up the inside into 11, and he just about covers it off. It might have happened, there's not a big braking zone there. So it's gonna be, always. it's always gonna be a really tough move. Into turn 11, isn't quite enough though, and that's put me on the back foot now coming up into the chicane it's kind of set me off quite badly as uh, we lost a bit of time and crucial momentum onto the back straight. His uh, grip through that uh, section is absolutely phenomenal. He might have got an extra penalty there because it looked like he did slightly cut. I don't know if he did though. This is the thing with the penalty. It's very obvious he has a penalty. How big the penalty is though, I have no clue. I really don't know. So at least I just need to stay as close as I can, he needs to have an absolutely scintillating lap here to try to extend his gap to over a second or something. Or um, I'm most likely going to win this one, but uh, I do want to win it on the track though. And you never know, I could still get a penalty here. It's not um, very often I have a penalty free race. So running a little bit too wide on the exit of turn three, into turn four, sorry, this is turn three now, just really making the most of the Astro Turf. You do have to absolutely know your track limits around here want to get the absolute best lap time so out of four out of the arena section for the final time setting another purple sector into turn five a little bit deep so i think the pressure is getting to both of us here as we uh, have only about two-thirds of a lap remaining in this epic encounter so down the hill into turn number seven 1400 points on offer in the championship i haven't done too many so far they've only got 666 points quite ominously so far I haven't done too many of the rounds though. I haven't really been in England. I haven't really had my console to hand. So coming up the hill through Schumacher S, I'm very, very close here. Probably about as close as I've been through that corner. He's going to go to the left-hand side, go defensive. 
again, just trying to get him out of position, try and get him into a position he doesn't want to be in, into turn 10, into turn 11, not going to go up the inside here, just going to really maximise the exit and try to go for a move into the chicane, he's blocking really well though, so going to sort of shimmy across and look up the outside, that's the only way I could have gone really, he's always going to cover the left hand side, the inside into the chicane, can I go around the outside, I don't think so. I'm going to get a good exit as he goes really deep into the chicane. I just about get through on the outside, up into the lead with just one corner to go. I'm going to go defensive into the final turn. There's no way he's going to be able to win this one on the track. He is now going to have to slow down to serve that penalty. He is going to finish second, I presume. But wow, that was an absolutely tiring race. Coming through eventually after more than 20 minutes of racing, nose to tail, in first. It may have been ruined by that penalty. He did finish five seconds off in the end, so I think that was quite a heavy penalty. But ultimately, the racing was still absolutely amazing between the two of us. The respect was there. We gave each other space when we needed to. And um, I would have quite happily finished second there because it was just such a good race. But there we go. I do hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts as always. Let me know your best encounters, your best races in, in this game or in any game. Just let me know how it went for you. But that is it. If you did enjoy the video, then uh, do think about hitting the like button and subscribing for more of the same. And I do thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, the support has been absolutely crazy recently. I thank you very much for that. I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Listen.